Welcome back, folks, to some more Ultima 7 Black Gate. You see a jovial young man who gives you a friendly greeting. I'm Garrett, the son of Bredwin and Breda. I'm too young to learn a trade of my own yet, but I do assist my parents in running the shelter. I hope to be a counselor in the fellowship one day, or a professional whistle panpipe player. You know panpipes are for gay little boys, right? I've been playing panpipes since I was little. I'm pretty good now if I say so myself. I keep the whistle by my bed and practice every night before going to sleep. Tell me of Britta, your whore mother. Oh, she's just my mother. She does whatever father does tell her to do. In the Fellowship? Oh, I can tell you all you need to know about us. The Fellowship is a group that has been gaining much popularity in recent years with the people of Britannia. While on the surface it may simply appear to be a scholarly society studying a particular philosophy, its teachings have the power to forever alter the shape of Britannian society. Its ceremonies are deeply moving experiences. Plenty of beds are available that I would like to stay in the shelter. He says with a condescending tone. Tell me of your dad. My father works for the fellowship helping poor people in paws. He tries to recruit them, but most refuse. Poor people? My father says that poor people reject the fellowship because the triad of inner strength requires strength of character. My father says poor are weak of character, and that's why they're poor. They don't have to be, they're just too lazy like Mexicans to work. Dost thou agree? No. Then you must be a person of weak character also. I do not like this town very much. The people are all poor, and the only one my age is Tobias, and he's poor too. Plus there's a thief. Tell me of Tobias. He and his mother are rejects. They are witless and stupid. I don't like them. You're a little punk ass kid. Alright, so in this game there's certain people you need to talk to and certain orders and certain things you need to say in order for other paths to open. Uh, so, let me blow through the conversation here again. I would have words with thee, Avatar. Oh, Avatar, I have news. Garrett, my son, told me that Tobias was in possession of some silver snake venom. I went to investigate and found Tobias with it. I have often said that Tobias was no good. Now here's the proof. He is the thief that has been preying upon one of our honest merchants. And to think I let him come into contact with my son. I hope he shall be dealt with in a manner appropriate to one who is leading youth astray from the way of the fellowship. I suggest that thou go speak with his mother at once. Camille should keep a tighter rein on her offspring. Right, well, let's go talk with Camille. Come on, catch me. Avatar, my son Tobias has been wrongly accused. He is no thief, and I cannot believe a vial of venom was found in his possession. I truly believe it planted there. Please, I beg thee, please clear my son's name. He has done no wrong. I know my son Tobias has suffered for not having a father. I've tried my best on my own to raise him well, but this farm requires so much work that I fear I do not have enough time to devote to him. But I know in my heart that my son is not a thief. Why do I suggest that thou speak with Morphin again? He may have recognized signs of usage on this foul substance and other members of the village. What does thou want? I do not know anything about stolen venom. I'm falsely accused. That's right, Garrett did it. I just know it. He was in my room the other day when I came in from the fields. He said he was looking for a ball, but I don't believe him. Falcons, believe me or not, I don't care. But if you're truly the Avatar, thou will know I'm telling the truth. Be on the way, asshole. I have said it a thousand times. Tobias is weak of character. He and his mother are poor because they're lazy. Now I am proven right because Tobias is a thief. A thief who's been caught.
So let's return to the butcher, see what the butcher has to say about this. Well, while you're up here, you can always speak with the, uh... You see a man covered in sweat of a hard day's work. I am Thurston. I operate the mill here in Paul's. The local economy depends upon the mill for flour, so I ensure that the mill runs sometimes. I feel that keeping the wheels turning is the only reason to live. Reason to live? I have no wife or family. I have thought about joining the fellowship, but I refuse. I have nothing but my work and a drink at the Salty Dog now and then. In truth, I go there more to be near Polly, the innkeeper, than for wine, but she is always busy tending the bar and has no time for me, I am sure. Alright, well, we'll let Polly know that the big black dude likes her. He wants to lay some pipe. Greetings, Ron Sock. Tobias stole the venom. I'm not so sure Tobias was the one who stole the venom. I have not seen any of the signs of venom used in Tobias, and I'm quite familiar with this symptom. But now that I think about it, I've noticed that Garrett has appeared very tired lately. He seems hy hyperactive one moment and unhealthy the next. Perhaps thou should make a search of Garrett's belongings, which reminds me. I saw him earlier playing near the slaughterhouse. He dropped his key. Perhaps it opens something significant. Here it is. The day to thee. All right. Gotta do a little reconnaissance. I food smells good. I'm hungry, Avatar. Feed me. So I tell Polly about Thurston, and she's like, Oh, God. Why would he like me? Why does he want to lay the pipe? So then we gotta go back and tell Thurston that Polly wants to mount him. Polly wants to mount you, Thurston. Mount you all night long. The sound effects are just terrible on this. Polly likes you. You relate to Thurston what Polly had said about him. He looks at you with joyous surprise. Did Polly really say those things? It is ridiculous that she believes I'm too good for her. Suddenly he forgets his work and starts tearing around in excitement. For years I have loved this woman from afar. I will begin courting her immediately. Alright, when you begin. begin that courtship. find the venom vile and garrett's belongings i'm amazed i'm astonished i'm sorry thankfully we cannot put this business of snake venom theft behind us thanks to thy thorough efforts i shall deal with my son let us speak of this no more mayest thou walk with the fellowship that's right you little punk ass kid you busted Yes, it was I who planted the venom on Tobias. He didn't deserve it. I beg thee, please do not tell my parents. Wilt thou tell my parents? Yes. Thou art weak of character. Otherwise thou would understand that I had tried to do. I stole the venom from Morphin so I could put the blame on Tobias. I may have not told the truth about Tobias stealing the venom, but I know that he is up to no good. He shall come to a bad end. You just wait and see. I do not know why Morphin has it or what he does with it. I only know that it is valuable and that it would cause everyone to worry if it was stolen. Garrett. Garrett does not meet your eyes. You distinctly know he is not telling the truth and he may very well be using the venom. Garrett shovels his feet and frowns. Well, I tried it just once. I'm sorry, I'll never use it again. I thought that if Tobias were accused of stealing something that everyone would notice, his mother would join the fellowship and force him to join too. 
It would improve their lives and force them to see the truth about themselves. You tell Camille how you discovered that Garrett was really the thief and that her son Tobias has been cleared. I want to thank you for finding the thief in our town and clearing my son's name. It does my heart good to see that Avatar has returned to us once again, and thou dost care enough about the people of Britannia to help solve our local troubles here in Paul's. Again, Avatar, I thank thee. Pleasant journey, Avatar! You little shit. You cleared your name, no reward? Alright, anyways. Down here in pause. Let us ho head toward Britain, the capital. Boot to pretty frown chow. Spark needs some food here. Ah, very tasty. I'll soon be plump. Go ahead and feed everyone here just a little smidget. Seven party gold. Well, let's head to Lord British's first. The man of the hour, Lord British. Avatar, I'm uh, doing a play about thee. My costume is too big. Job? Stay dry, please. I am Iolo, my liege. This is the Dungeon Despise. Alright, that place sucks. Seriously? That just got like random tentacles in the moat, snatching people as they walk by. Chuckles, you are wary of conversing with that trickster Chuckles, but decide to anyways. I must not say my name, lest I break the rule of the game. Game? Thou must play the game if thou want to speak with me. What are the rules? Thou must learn the game and then jump in and play it. Explain it, asshole. Thou didst just break the rule of the game, thou hast best learn it. You can lick my ass. There's gargoyles walking around here. What the hell? Welcome, my friend. Please tell me what brings thee to Britannia. And more importantly, what brought thee here? A Red Moon Gate, my leash. You relate the story of how Red Moon Gate appeared behind your house and mysteriously took you to Trinsic. 
Lord British's brow creases as you speak. Finally, he says, I did not send the Red Moon Gate to fetch thee. Someone or something must have activated that Moon Gate, and that is strange indeed. Because we have been having a bit of trouble with Moon Gates as of late, in fact, we have been having a bit of trouble in magic in general. Mine has not worked since the troubles with the magic began. In fact, none of the Moon Gates have been working reliably for quite a while. Didst thou bring night more over the moons? Uh, I don't think so. I see. Mm, thou might be stranded in Britannia. Here, why not try mine? I shall let thee borrow it. Perhaps it will work for thee. Be careful, though. The moon gates have become dangerous. Lord British hands you his orb of the moons. Something is awry. Magic has not been working for the longest time. I even have trouble creating food with magic. It must be something to do with the magic ether. There are those who say that the magic is dying. What with the trouble with the moon gates and the situation with Nystril. I'm beginning to suspect that they might be right. Lord British studies you a moment. Perhaps magic will work better for thee. Thou hast not been in Britannia long. It is possible that whatever has affected magic has not made its mark upon thee yet. Please, try it. A spellbook is stored with the rest of thine equipment. Yes, I have a spellbook stored away with the rest of thy equipment. What's up with Nystru? Uh, try talking to him. Lord British looks at you gravely. The foundation of Britannia was shaken with the rising of an island. This event was no random disaster. It is one of the sorcerer's intent. Yes, Ronsok, I felt a great disturbance in the ether when this island arose from the sea. The island is none other than the Isle of Fire, where thou defeated the Hellspawn, Exodus. Thy battle with the strange mixture of machine and spirit is now legendary. Do be careful if thou art going to the isle, for the remains of that being now reside in one of the chambers of the Castle of Fire. Isle of Fire? Ronstock, thou shouldst know when I created the Shrines of Virtues, I also set upon this island three great shrines, dedicated to the principles of truth, love, and courage. Thy reside within the walls of the Castle of Fire. I never revealed this to thee before, as I thought them forever lost when the Isle of Fire mysteriously sank beneath the waves. The shrines are meant for the use of an avatar only, and therefore a talisman will be necessary to use them. The talismans are guarded by test that thou shalt have no problem passing if thou wish to seek their counsel. If thou wish to sink out the isle, thou may must use my ship. It now sits upon the southern shore of Vesper, and is called the Golden Ankh. Please, feel free to use it for as long as thou hast need. Lord Briss hands you the deed of the ship. I have also focused a magical crystal to the entrance of the Castle of Fire, which I refurbished after thy battle with Exodus. Here, take it! Perhaps it will give thee some insight, although be warned, it is not all that stable and might be prone to shadow the nearer thou findest thyself to the location in which it is tuned. Lord British gives you the crystal. Tell me of this fellowship. They're an extremely useful and productive group of citizens. I should most certainly visit the fellowship headquarters here in Britain and speak with Batman. The fellowship has done many good deeds throughout Britannia, including feeding the poor, educating and helping those in need, and promoting general goodwill and peace. Batlin? He is a druid who began the fellowship about twenty years ago. He is highly intelligent and is a warm and gentle human being. What of these headquarters? Yes, it is not far from the castle, to the southwest. It is just south of the theater. What the hell is wrong with the moon gates? The moon gates are not functioning. We cannot use them as we have in the past. Not only are they dysfunctional, they are in fact dangerous. One of my trusted sages used my own orb of the moons to travel to the Shrine of Humility, and his body did shatter upon entering the gate. If only the mage and cove hadn't gone mad. Mad mage? The ruler leans forward and speaks quietly. There is a mad mage in cove by the name of Radium. Thou shalt remember him. Radium has working with the magical substance called Black Rock. Before he went mad, he claimed that this mineral could solve problems of the moon gates. I suggest that thou shouldst go to the cove and find him. Try to learn what it was he was doing through the black rock material. It could be our only hope. Rudyum? He was a brilliant and respected mage. But something happened to him in recent years. He seemed to go completely senile. Surely thou shalt remember Cove is a very pleasant town to the east of Britain. Quite relaxing. Thou art welcome to any of mine equipment. I keep it in a locked storeroom here in my castle. Thou wilt find the key in my study. 
This is the western end of the castle. Jesus Christ, how long has it been since you ventured through Ultima Six? What's your name? Lord British Lass. Ha <laughs> ha! What are thou joking, Avatar? Dost thou not recognize thine old friend? He rolls his eyes. Must we go through this formality? Very well, as thou knowest, I am sovereign of Britannia, and have been for some time now. Even though I come from thy homeland, I have chosen to live my life here. I know that it has been many a year since I visited our Earth, but surely thou remember that the two of us hail from the same time and place. And as brothers in origin, thou should also remember that thou can ask me for aid at any time. Thou might require it. Do not forget, Avatar, that I have the power to heal thee. That is one bit of magic that still seems to work, and I could probably provide thee with some equipment and a spellbook. I can still heal, cure poison, and sometimes resurrect. Art thou in need of one of these? Go ahead and heal me up there, big guy. Indeed, this person is badly wounded. Damn, you can't just heal the whole fucking party? Anyways, let's go find this equipment. So the key was in your study, you liar. I guess it's not your bedroom. There we go. There's the key. Uh, Lord British said I could take the key. Thanks a lot, bitch. I don't need you telling me what to do. Little skank. Where's my bedroom? Where'd you move my bedroom to? You see, your former companion and friend, Joffrey, Captain of the Guard. Joffrey chuckles. Art thou joking? I am Joffrey. These days I remain in my position as captain of the guard. I am Lord British's personal bodyguard, and I am in charge of security at the castle. I do not have much time or use for adventuring now. Have courage, have faith, be strong, be wise. Holy shit. We're still carrying around a baby in my backpack, by the way. Benny, B -b -b Benny and the Jets. All right, I'm still looking for my bedroom here. It has been several, several decades since I have visited Britannia. What's this document say? It says I cannot read it. Let me 
We now have two stories here. Let's just go up to the crenellation. When do we eat? You just ate, you little bastard. What the fool believes. Within the pages of this book is the story of a bard, a blonde, and a bottle. The perfect combination for a classic tale of the war between sexes. Is that virtuous? You see an angry guard. Cease and desist immediately. Thou wish to avoid unpleasantries of a lengthy trial? What is your liberty worth? The guard looks unimpressed. How about a bit more? A jail is populated by some... I'm not giving you shit, dude. That's fucking great. He ate a fucking banana in the king's castle and I'm getting into a fight. What a dick. All right, we're back. I had to reload because I decided to kill a guard. Or because I decided to steal a fucking banana. And the guards do not like avatars who steal bananas. Bad avatar. All right, let's find the storeroom here. Wait, he's got a musket. All right, this must be the storeroom where we're going to get our sleep roll. There's our spell book. So yeah, some basic spells here. Fire Blast. Heal. That's pretty much it. Cure and Light and some basic things. Awaken. Weather. Douse. Fireworks. Thunder. Ignite. Help and Glimmer. Don't believe those lower level ones require any kind of reagents. I thought there was a way to put both at one time. I guess I'll have to tinker around with that. There is my bag of reagents, which I will need. You got too much shit, Avatar. Too much shit. Won't fit. That is horse caca.
Ooh, some magic booties. Alright, folks. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.